Hey guys, it's Anna J. Wallner with the Author Library, and this is the first of hopefully a series of many uh, tips on marketing. And that big thing that we always ask about in uh, in in chat in the writing community, something that we always wonder about. Um, I'm going to do my best to, to to share with you the things that I've done horrendously wrong and the ways that I've learned from that uh, and also the ways that I've incorporated or learned to incorporate uh, my experience with a global oil and gas company in marketing and sales. So I thought that it would be fairly easy to make the shift from selling multi-million dollar equipment to selling a book. How hard could that be? I had absolutely no idea what I was getting into. It is a completely different ball game. And I had to, I was thinking extremely creatively and thinking that the book would speak for itself. And the fact is no one knew who I was. No one knows who most of us are until you have a dedicated reader base and a platform on social media, which I did not. I jumped in uh, in August, a full eight months after I had published my first book in the first series um, that I wrote. Big misstep on my part. A lot of you guys are doing the right thing. I see a lot of you that are working on your first novel and you're already in the writing community and you're already engaging and you're already talking. Fantastic. Way, way, way ahead of where I began. So I was forced to step back and take a look at being an author from a business point of view. You are a small business. You yourself as an author are a product your works your books although we're very very passionate about them and when we write them they're more a labor of love than they are a product but they are in fact at the end a product so um, you have to think of branding yourself as well as branding your books so everything should be be a cohesive kind of style. If you write, um, think of your, your covers that you have for your book. If you write um, fantasy, then they're all going to have a similar theme. If you write uh, thrillers, then they're all going to have a similar theme. If you write, uh, if you write horror, it's all going to have a similar theme. Brand yourself. Brand your social media. Brand uh, everything that y is you as a small business and as a small business owner needs to have a cohesive kind of theme. So keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, don't stray too far in the beginning from your intended reader base. So for me, I did try and do this in the beginning. And I learned from that fail, another fail. But we always learn, we learn from our fail, failures. Don't ever think that it's the end of the world. So <clears throat> I pulled back that memoir and I pulled back that uh, thriller that I wrote. Although they were fun to write and stretch my creative legs, uh, so to speak, they weren't branded as Anna J. Walner, young adult fantasy author. And that is how the website, my author website, is branded as a young adult fantasy author. So I thought about it and I said, uh, if I write outside of my genre, then people are going to pick up this gritty uh, thriller and probably 
be angry or disappointed or disillusioned and it doesn't quite fit with the brand that I wanted to build, the platform that I wanted to build. Once you build that platform and once you have that reader base, you have, the, you have more freedom. So in the beginning, I would highly suggest to stay within a specific genre and build your reader base and then branch out from there. Uh, a, an author's website is essential when you are building this, this base, this readership base and this brand. And you want to be searchable. You want to have people be able to find you. That is where SEO uh, comes in. Search engine optimization. Type in your name to Google. Then type in your name author into Google. See if it comes up. If it doesn't, then you might want to think about search engine optimization and hire someone that can help you with that. Natasha Link of the writing community actually does this and she's fantastic at it. I'll have her link uh, in the description below. It's something that you might think of doing. If you are going with a pen name, pick one that is unique. When you search Anna J. Walner, you can type it into any search engine and my name will, my website will come right up because un unless it auto corrects it to Walker, Anna J. Walker, which sometimes it does. Uh, but Walner, there are not a lot of us out there. So uh, I have a unique name to start with, but if you're going to pick a pen name, don't go with something that is uh, going to be lost amidst a sea of other searches. The same goes for your book. When you're thinking of a book title, especially for your first book, uh, don't make it something like uh, C. Jane Run because you're going to be lost in a sea of books. People are going to have to do a lot of work on Goodreads or on Barnes and Noble or Amazon or any other search engine uh, or book site, whatever, to find your debut novel. And you want it to stand out. My first uh, in the, Alu well, the Aluru Legacy series itself is a strange name. Uh, but Garcane is also a strange name. So uh, it, it's, it's unique and it will pull up instantly in, uh, in Goodreads and on Amazon and on Barnes and Noble. So that's something to think about whenever you are wanting to name your, your book and to pick a pen name. So as I said, um, go to test it out and uh, whenever you are thinking of doing, uh, whenever you are thinking of uh, your title or your pen name, make sure to search those and do your diligence and see what comes up. Uh, some websites, like I said, it is essential because you are a brand. So you want people to be able to go to a reputable website one that looks professional, is professionally designed, and branded in the same way that your books are. So it's important for everything to be somewhat cohesive so they know what to expect. If I am writing young adult fantasy and you go to my website and you see a bunch of romance or... Um, um, steampunk or something that's a bit out <laughs> that you wouldn't necessarily expect it's going to confuse you a little bit so kind of keep that in mind when branding your website because you want people to visit it and you don't want them to just jump right out because they don't know if that's you or not uh, and then let's see uh, the same thing with your creatives make sure that you have several different creatives 
and that they also follow the same kind of cohesive theme. So uh, something that fits with your book, your genre, and who you are as an author. It's important for everything to kind of come together uh, as a, um, from, a, from a business standpoint. This is all from a business standpoint. And I, I think that's where I went wrong in the beginning is because I thought more passionately and creatively than I did with my uh, logistics and business mind. So um, another thing that I want to talk about is that you will end up spending some money, whether it's on your, your website only or whether it's to uh, copyright your book. Guys, copyright your book. Um, you're going, you're, you're going to have to put out, self-publishing is not 100% free. Successful self-publishing is not going to be 100% free. I, I mean, I, I think there are exceptions to every rule. I can't say that it's, that, that it's, that there's never going to be a, a time whenever it's 100% free, but I think that, that you'll see a better, uh, a better return on investment if you do invest a bit of money into your small business, your product, which is you and your books. So if you choose to primarily, uh, if you choose to only publish through KDP and that's it, and you are very active in the writing community and in other groups and on other social media and you don't run any ads, it's possible for you to do that for free. Uh, but I think that a lot of us want to perhaps increase the odds of our book being found or um, being available to more than, you know, to, to run those ads. <clears throat> Guys, you can get a lot, many, many thousands and thousands of, of, of impressions. And that is every time that your book is seen. So uh, if you want to run a highly, uh, a highly visible marketing campaign, then, then you will have to spend a little bit of money. And it is money that uh, you're going to want to keep track of. So guys, from a business standpoint, keep this in mind. Uh, you may want to get your DBA, which is a doing business as every state, every county will have their own way of doing this. This is completely up to you, but it allows you to become a sole proprietor, which means that you can claim business expenses, marketing and advertising, these sorts of things as a, as a business expense. So that's one thing to think about when, uh, when you are creating your company, your small business, which is you. Uh, the next term that I want to discuss is ROI. You'll hear me talk about this later in other segments when we get into what marketing platforms there are available. It's called, it, it means a return on investment. So you have a, uh, you have an investment. So you invest $25. What are you getting for that $25? It may not be a book sale, but it may be 10,000 people that see your advertisement. It may be 25 people who are drawn to your website. It may be 1,000, 2,000 people who see your book trailer. It may be it, your, your return on investment is different, uh, for every, it, it's what you consider value. You can place value on impressions, on clicks, on, uh, people who, who buy the book. And sometimes it's all three, hopefully it's all three. And that just means playing around with different things. <clears throat> There are optional things that you can do um, with animated covers, 
uh, your uh, book trailers if you choose to have one made. Now, I happen to have the experience to do that myself. Leverage what experience you do have in digital graphics and play around with some things. You'll only get better if you don't feel comfortable doing certain things. Know when to outsource. I have character art that should be coming very soon. That's not something that I can do myself. I know that I need to outsource that. Uh, the same with merchandising, if you do choose to merchandise, uh, to offer merchandising. I cannot create a coffee cup or a canvas tote bag or candles. I mean, I, mean, I guess I, the candles I could, but uh, the point is that outsource uh, what you need to and only take on what you feel comfortable doing. So cover design is another thing. If you don't feel comfortable doing cover design, uh, then, then there are economic options that are available out there. There are economic options. There are some very expensive options and there's everything in between. So do your due diligence and your research. Uh, the writing community is a great place for you to gain some insight and some recommendations. Take a look at some of the books uh, in the writing community that pop up on those writers lists. Reach out to that author and say, hey, who did your cover? I love it. And nine times out of 10, they'll be more than happy to recommend the service or the person that did, if it's a company, um, you know, who, who, who it was that did it. If it's a friend, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but, uh, but there's no harm in asking. And I know that Canva is another, uh, another option as well. So just explore those options. Let's see. The other thing that I want to uh, talk about is once you do do your website, make sure that you sign up for Google Analytics. I mentioned this in the previous video. What are analytics? Analytics is a fancy term for uh, measuring all sorts of things. <laughs> uh, your demographic of who clicks on your website, uh, what their interests are, their age, their location. Um, sometimes it can even include where the traffic came from so you can find out, hey, that ad that I ran on Twitter is really paying off because over half of my website visits are driven, the traffic is driven from, from Pinterest or, or from Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook or, or anywhere else or just a, a general, a direct search. If you've done, um, if you've handed, you know, things out that have your, that have your website address on them, then people may just type it into the computer or they may search. They may search for you and then just click on the link. So uh, analytics uh, is a, just a fancy term of, of compiling data. So um, I did analytics, uh, analytics reports on a weekly basis when I used to work um, in the oil and gas um, sector and uh, we would do productivity analytics we would do sales analytics we would do uh, um, on-time delivery analytics just almost any kind of analytics that you can think of I ran and that was part of my job those reports so I have more experience with analytics reporting than a lot of people do don't get frustrated take your time and that's why I'm trying to explain kind of what these terms are so that it doesn't seem like I'm speaking Russian because I understand that a lot of people don't, don't uh, fully understand what I'm talking about. So if you have any questions that you want me to specifically answer in the next video, which I will try and do, um, I don't think I have time to do it today. But, um, but if you do have specific questions that you would like me to address, uh, please leave them in the comments. Make sure that you subscribe because these videos, 
that I'm some a lot of I won't always be posting this to Twitter or to Facebook or to Instagram so uh, make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you invite other people to subscribe as well um, so carrying on with just one more tip because we're moving on to 20 minutes here uh, uh, one more tip is to yes engage in the writers lists uh, that are on Twitter so make sure that you um, make sure that you are actively doing that when you have uh, a cover that's designed or a graphic or something that you want to share it's not it's it's a necessity and being able to put yourself and your work out there is a necessity because unless you are vastly um, wealthy you're not going to have the ability to hire someone to do all of that for you and surprise some small independent um, publishers or hybrid publishing or uh, vanity publishing won't do uh, the the level that they will do some some marketing and advertising themselves, but they won't do quite the level that say uh, the big four will. Uh, so so you will be responsible at some point for doing a little bit of the legwork when it comes to putting your own putting your own books out there, <clears throat> and. Um, so next time I'm planning on talking about the uh, different social media uh, platforms um, and the benefits of each one which you get the most bang for your buck on and um, trying to think um, like I said leave 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 some questions in, in the comments of what you would like me to try and answer because if I just you know all at you then it's it's going to be like you know step back but um, in also in the beginning um, I would say make a decision on how you want to publish your books I know a lot of authors that publish only to Amazon and uh, only Amazon Kindle just ebooks that's it and that is perfectly fine um, but do be aware that there are other options out there there are um, distributors um, We'll talk about that next time. I, I think that's a good one for next time. Is 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 determining uh, how you want your book to be uh, to be found and how you want it to be published, because there are many different options that are available now. Thank goodness in this day and age where we have options that we can explore as independent authors. Um, if 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 you are truly independent, if 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 you're not uh, uh, with a uh, with a publisher at all then there are many different options out there for you to consider and uh, I will tell you some of the pros and cons about <laughs> about what I have had to go through in my journey and then hopefully you can share your feedback uh, as well if you've chosen to go with any of those companies at any rate um, again please do if you find this video helpful uh, let me know if you don't find it helpful let me know what I can improve on and what you want to know more about because I am just making this video because I see everyone wondering about uh, your marketing plan and what it takes to successfully market a book and I can tell you uh, only what I know that I have done wrong and what I have now uh, tried and it is a process of trial and error I don't have hard and fast um, I don't have a hard and fast uh, manual for you that is going to make you a best-selling author if anyone has a course 
that says, follow these 10 steps and you will be a best-selling author, don't believe them because every book is different, every author is different, every budget is different. So uh, keep that, keep your expectations in check. Realize that if I spend $6,000 on marketing in a six month period, that uh, most likely I'm going to have uh, greater exposure and uh, reach a larger market than someone who is spending you know, uh, $200 or $500 in that same six month period. So, uh, so just keep your expectations in line and don't go over budget. Make sure that you, you, it's, it's, it is, it is a small business and you do need to invest into it, but that doesn't mean that you have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars if you don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because um, you have to do what's right for you. And that's different for every person. So like I said, make sure to subscribe because these videos won't be posted on Twitter. Uh, this is just something that I decided to do because I kept seeing the question continuously and I'm only passing along the knowledge that I have. And please feel free to add your comments and your suggestions and your knowledge for anyone else that is, uh, that is looking for answers as well. Everyone's input is greatly appreciated and, um, and I can't overstate that enough. So I will see you back here probably tomorrow with another episode and I'll try and make it a little, more, I'll try and make it a little more, uh, have a little bit more of an agenda, but, but do let me know if there's something that you want me to cover. All right, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you soon.